I'm here to pick up the tractor. Dead Bobcat coming in for service. If you've never been there, if you've never had this happen, it's a pain in the butt. So props to these guys actually got it, got it into the shop. Unfortunately, they had to use a massive tow truck with a winch, obviously, to get it. But when you lose your 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 engine on a, on a, any skid steer, it sucks because you have to do this, and this forklift's not big enough to pick this guy. He needs to get it from the back. So just a new guy just doesn't know what he's doing. You need to lift it from the from, uh, from the back and then forklift it in. Uh, but I don't know if the forklift's gonna have it because that machine right there is about 9,000 pounds. So I'm not sure if it's got it or not. But uh, nonetheless, yeah, two guys, maybe two, they'll get it. But anyway, I do wish skid steers had a lock, an unlock. Um, so let the drive motors like basically be a neutral uh, when you lose your engine. But they they, they don't put that on. It's such a it's such a disappointment that. Uh, that these that these types of companies just don't have that figured out at this point in time and it's like it's not hard to do it's you just have to care about your customers and be like hey so eventually every machine dies and this thing happens fortunately i've only had one totally die on a job site and that was when it blew a drive motor and we got it on a tow truck the tow truck winch snapped and everything but it was still up there uh but it's kind of like one of the downsides to having a skid and also why having a smaller skid somewhat helpful sometimes because it's like if your machine goes dead, you either have to service it out there or you've got to, you know, figure out what your game plan is going to be. And I'm going to go get the tractor and I'm looking at a couple other tractors. I need something that's just a little bit bigger than what I'm working with right now. Just a little bit bigger than what I'm working with. I need more like loading capability. Like I need to be able to load the dump truck. And I really want a mid-mount mower, but those are just like not popular anymore. So... I don't know. Nothing I'm doing like immediately, but like a 12 month window, I'm looking looking for a, a different tractor. Only John Deere has a mid mount PTO and like 40 plus horsepower. I would love something like this. Like this is a good size. Maybe I'll like this would be a great size. But um, what I've got now is just like too small for most of the stuff I do. But sometimes it's good for other stuff. So anyway love i love walking around equipment dealerships that's a great first skid by the way i'm super bullish on that on the uh 65 wheeled like landscaper guys like that is a great great first machine had a friend that started with that machine eventually moved up into a bobcat with tracks but that's a great first machine and uh you know, super reliable no ignitions it's what you want all right, so we're picking up Donkey Kong. She had um, a tremendous amount of work done to her, like $6,000 of work done to her, which is not ideal with, uh, you know, 770 hours. Basically the transmission came out. Um, my buddy Caleb Allman had come down and the machine had just hit like 103 hours. I remember him driving around and uh, my neighbor needed help next door and I brought the tractor over to his house. I brought it back and it was making this clicking noise. And I told my wife, I'm like, so the tractor's going down, man. Something's happening. Well, that was at 103 hours. It took 700 additional hours. Kept clicking, kept clicking. Eventually, it was plowing. Hit like a stump. Thing ripped out. Um, Kubota Insurance took care of it. Kubota warranty sucks these days. Um, but I was like, hey, I've I had the machine in there like several times complaining about this very issue. A stump or piece of concrete or whatever it hit to like actually like cause whatever damage it did. But basically, they had to pull the whole transmission out. I haven't even read the work order. They just said like all my gears were jacked um, and whatnot. So anyway, it got fixed at an expense to me of like 1200 at a total expense of like six grand, which makes me question like, you know, this thing's probably a $25,000 tractor. So it makes me kind of question like, it's pretty young in its life, only two years old, two and a half years old. Um, you know, my long-term plans for it. We'll see if it, if it, now it's good. I, I feel like it was manufacturing deep front, deep default from the, from the factory. Um, but nonetheless, um, got her back together now and, uh, we're going to go ahead and go push some mulch and see how she does. Well, it's kind of looking like it was just a fluke and, uh, basically it was on the differential lock where we had the issue, the differential kind of acts like a starter almost, like a starter on a flywheel and had broken off a tooth. And that's probably what happened a long time ago. And then once that tooth was broken, it just slowly blew off all those teeth. And so 
anyway, everything should be good now. They, uh, I got one, these levers, the shift lever, kind of like where you put it in gear and where you activate the PTO. I got on it and I moved it, you know, into high gear and I'm like, oh, this doesn't feel right. So I talked to the guys. I'm like, is this, did you guys put this on backwards? Cause it's definitely backwards, the handle. And they're like, no, it's on right. And I'm like, probably came from the factory in reverse. Uh, and, uh, and that could have been a factor over amount of time, but nonetheless, Kubota Insurance picked it up. They are fabulous. Second insurance claim I've had on this machine. I literally would consider another Kubota for the insurance. Uh, the warranty on Kubota, not that great. Resale on Kubota, fabulous. The dealership on Kubota, amazing. When you go to a, a to buy a machine, um, your dealership matters. Now, if you buy something used and, um, and you've got a good shop that works on it, you know, that, that matters, that's a different situation. And if you go to buy something new um, or gently pre-owned, because you know, that's what you're doing, your, your dealership matters so much. People ask me about brand all the time and it's just like, how close are you to your dealer? How good is your dealer? Are they gonna take care of you? Your sales guy might be fabulous, but the shop might suck. You gotta have a good shop and a halfway decent sales guy that can work with you. When both of those factors are right, that's a win. And that's the main reason why I went with Kubota on this time around was like, you know, I've had a lot of different brands, a lot of different machines. I've always had good luck with Kubota. Uh, they make a great engine and parts are sometimes not in supply. Sometimes they take a little bit of time to get here. Um, some of them come from Japan. So there can be delays, there can be additional costs, but for the most part, I have nothing really bad to say about Kubota. I, I have had a few issues with this machine and there's a few things on there that I would personally change. Like uh, I would up the quality of the metal a little bit on a few items. Uh, some of the quick release pins and stuff kind of fell apart on me early and to have them rebuild. Like there's a few little things where I understand they wanna build the machine as cheap as they can. They gotta build thousands of them. But there's also like a point where I feel like they could get away with up in the price 500 bucks, but just saying like, hey, this is a quality, quality machine. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, it is what it is. Got the machine back, see how she rolls. Um, I do want something a little bit bigger, I think. I think I want something a little bit bigger. I want a, a taller loader to load the dump truck. I'd really love to find like an old used loader, but I don't know. I got I to gotta get more hours on this tractor before I really want to toss it um, or sell it because it's not going to drop in value for the next thousand hours on me, you know? So probably utilize it for another year and a half, two years, we'll see maybe, and look at other options. If there's a good way to swap out, I probably will because I don't use the backhoe as much as I thought I would. And of course I say that now, and then, you know, maybe something will dramatically change and all of a sudden I'll be using it all the time. But more or less, I pull the backhoe on and off, and I don't enjoy that process. It's not an easy process to put the backhoe on and off. It's, it takes me an hour to do it. I've gotten a little bit better at it. Um, then it sits around, I've got this big backhoe, and then when I put it back on, and then I, you know, I'd rather just have a tractor with a three-point hitch, never have to touch it, put a quick attach on it, quick, quick attach for the implements, it just you know is what it is. I do kind of wish I bought a larger tractor, and if I wanted a backhoe, the the uh, three point hitch backhoe. I understand they're not as bad, you know, they're not as great, and they don't have the extra frame like the TLBs do. But I just find I don't really use the backhoe much. And if I do, I think I'd rather just rent an excavator. Honestly, I think I'd just rather rent one. And uh, you, you know, because I use this for grading and stuff like that, and I really like grading with it. So I love grading with a box plate but I don't like the escalator so much to back up by the way. So anyway.